All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, winter driving, okay, and defensive driving. This is actually the same presentation that I gave at the safety meeting. I've adjusted a bit, added a few more things, um, but uh, a lot of this stuff is review. I know most of you guys here, um, you're all pretty seasoned drivers, so you know, this should really, like I said, just kind of be a, a review. But it's always good to talk about this stuff getting into the winter season. I've been pretty lucky the last, uh, um, <clears throat> You know, a couple months here. We haven't had uh, that much snow or anything. So, um, all right, let's let's get into this. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to talk about chains too because I know that's been a, a hot topic among uh, some people here. So, uh, first off, we're going to talk about the top reasons for winter collisions. Okay, so we got them up here: uh, limited or reduced visibility. Okay, uh, limited or reduced traction. Aggressive braking on slick roads, inability to judge uh, safe speed conditions, poor shifting skills on slick roads, failure to properly prepare your vehicle, okay, and failure to properly plan your route properly. That's that's a big one too, the trip planning one. And we'll we'll talk a little bit about that as we as we go along. Uh, failure to adapt to changing weather conditions, okay, and uh, always the big one, driving too fast for the conditions, okay. All right, so let's talk about uh, chain laws in Canada and the U.S. Um, our company policy here is if you legally have to chain up, okay, what we like you to do is to find a safe place if possible, take your break, okay? Communication is key. Talk to your dispatcher, let them know. Say, look, the, you know, the lights are flashing, let's say, or you've got it on your phone, you know that uh, uh, whatever highway or interstate you're going on is going to require change, you want to take a break. Uh, that's that's more than uh, more than okay. All right. Um, can you just move over just a tad because the camera is right there. Perfect. Thank you. Um, in British Columbia, there's actually the BC Highway app, okay, which not only monitors uh, road conditions but will also tell you when you are legally required to uh, to chain up. Okay. But like I said, really, what we really want you guys to do is just if you need to chain up, find a safe place, take a break, let your dispatcher know if your load's going to be a little bit late. Not a big deal, uh, as long as you communicate that with your dispatcher, okay? Uh, but if you guys do need to chain up, let's say you're in Colorado and you're driving and you see the lights flash on and there's nowhere to stop and, and, and um, you know, safely take a break, uh, feel free, if you know how to, to go ahead and chain up. Uh, I've given you guys each a handout, which um, it outlines six different, uh, one state and five, or sorry, one province and five states. <coughs> what the regulations, the laws and regulations are for uh, for chaining up. So they're there for your reference, okay? But like I said, typically as a rule, just, just try to find a safe place, communicate with your dispatcher and let them know, okay? So we're looking at in that handout, you've got uh, BC, California, Colorado, Nevada, Washington, and Wyoming, okay? Now in BC, they've recently just uh, tightened up the chain laws. Um, if you are gonna run with chains, okay, it's, it's actually hasn't changed for the, uh, the five axle uh, semi combination, you're still required to do your four drives, okay? So those would be the, the first set, uh, the first axle closest to your bunk, all four wheels would have to be chained um, in order to remain legal. You guys all know all your trucks do have chains on there, but again, really we provide them because we don't want you to use them. Um, you know, it's, it's much better to just take a break instead of uh, risk yourself, uh, the freight or someone else, okay? <clears throat> Uh, just before we get too much into this, there's some helpful apps that you can utilize on your smartphones. The weather app is a, is a pretty obvious one. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know about the Waze traffic uh, condition app. That's a really good one and uh, it's usually pretty accurate. It's basically just other drivers updating it all the time and um, letting you know what traffic conditions are. And I mean, they have everything on there from uh, you know, where radar is. Um, there was even one I had, uh, I was driving up north. <clears throat> And there was a guy who, or there was actually a deer that had been hit on the road, and it was on the Waze app. And I thought, there's no way that's actually going to be there. And sure enough, when I turned the bed, it was there. So uh, it's it's a really good one to utilize. Another one is Trucker's Path. Okay, if you guys haven't heard of that one, it's great for planning rest stops. Has everything all across uh, United States and Canada. You can find a good place to, uh, to 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 stop and shut down. All right, and, and trip planning is really really important uh, when it comes to winter driving. Okay, so utilize that one. Uh, your Google Maps, that's pretty pretty standard one there. Uh, one thing I don't know if everybody's aware of, but when you're on Wi-Fi, you can actually take a piece of uh, a map in your Google Maps, 
download it to your phone so you can use it offline. Let's say if you're down in the States, you don't have a data package uh, or that kind of thing, or you're, you don't want to use your data, just download it over Wi-Fi. When you're here at the terminal, right, it's something that you can utilize. We have free Wi-Fi throughout here. Download those maps and then you can use them offline, okay? The one that we talked about earlier, the BC Highway map, again, that's a great one for the, uh, the chain laws, okay? So they'll actually tell you if your highway um, is requiring chains. The last two aren't really weather related, but they do help in your trip planning. There's a CBP border wait time, that's a US app, and then the CBSA one as well for your Canadian border times. Uh, they're also pretty good as well. And that really comes more into your trip planning, but it's, uh, it's part of the whole process, okay? All right, so our three rules for winter driving, okay? Be prepared, uh, look, be aware of your surroundings, adjust your driving uh, to any adverse conditions. Okay, these are the three keys we're going to go through uh, in this presentation. All right, so we'll start off with being prepared. Okay, so a few things you want to do when you're being prepared, right? Obviously, you want to have your, your charge cell or smartphone. That's always, uh, you know, critical. It's nice to have that lifeline there available to you. Ice scraper, snow brush, uh, flashlight as well. Okay, I like to have an additional flashlight, including the, like everybody utilizes the one on their phone, but it's always nice to have a nice bigger one. Um, you know, especially when you're doing your pre-trip inspections, that kind of thing. Hats, gloves, boots, extra clothing, okay, again, this is all pretty standard stuff. Sleeping bags, extra blankets, um, your first aid kit obviously will be in your truck, uh, safety triangles, uh, extra fluids, okay, if you need lock de-icer as well, um, coolant, oil, all that stuff you can get in the shop here uh, in air and also up in Roxeter, okay. It's also a good idea to keep some, some canned food. Um, energy bars are a good one, bottled water, that kind of thing, just to make sure um, you, know, you don't run out of food. All right? And it does happen. That, you know, I'm sure you guys have all been there. I remember when I was in Windsor one time, I broke down. It took almost eight hours for them to get out to, to fix a blown uh, airbag. And uh, you know, I had some extra food, luckily, but it kept them going. It wasn't something that was planned. Uh, some other things to consider, candles, matches, tin can, uh, kitty litter, collapsible shovel, okay. Uh, I always kept uh, two by four of wood blocks as well. That can always get you out of a jam. And even just a bag of salt. I mean, it's, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Just just uh, put it in your, in your truck or in your cab, forget about it. Um, but uh, when when you need it, it's it's there. And it really, if you guys know, it doesn't take a lot of salt to, to get your drives moving again. You know, just, just a little bit to melt, just to get some traction usually do the job, okay? Uh, back to the trip planning that we were talking about, all right? We wanna make sure that we check our, our weather forecasts and, and really allow yourself that extra time to arrive at your stops, okay? Um, know your route, okay, and adjust it based on the current weather conditions, all right? It may be nice in the first section of your trip, but you know, you may be heading into a storm, that kind of thing, so adjust your, your time, all right? Um, ensure your tractor has tire chains. We all know all Hyman trucks do have tractor chains, so you should all be, all be set there. But if for some reason you don't, talk to, uh, talk to Wayne in the shop or when you're up in Rockster, talk to those guys up there. They'll, they'll get you um, hooked up, okay? All right, so continuing on with the being prepared. Uh, tire check is extremely important during cold weather, and I think a lot of guys forget about that. Um, you know, you want to monitor that tire pressure, okay? When you've got changing temperatures or whatever, it has a, it has a drastic effect on, on that, uh, that PSI inside your tire, okay? So the best time to check uh, the pressure is at the beginning of the day uh, before your tires have started to move, okay? So when you're doing your morning pre-trip, that's a good time to check, make sure that they are um, where they need to be, okay? When the temperature outside uh, is the same temperature on the inside of the tire, uh, you'll get a better, more accurate read on your PSI, okay? All right, so um, ensure that your valve stems are straight and capped. Um, remember, it, uh, during this time, if they get water in there, right, they're prone to leaking, right? So always be aware of that. Um, our company standard is uh, 110 for the steers and 100 uh, for your drives and trailer tires, okay? Check your fluids, again, make sure your coolant's topped up, oil is at full capacity. Uh, another big one too is your fifth wheel, okay? And, and you can do that here in the shop. Go, <coughs> you need to do it yourself. Just make sure that it's greased, all right? When you start getting snow and ice in there uh, and they start to freeze up like that, and if they're not greased properly, they're not gonna work properly, all right? It's just gonna cause some delays. So with our Pro Stars, they're pretty much all now, most modern day trucks are equipped with air dryers, right? So, uh, you know, it's not like in the old days where we had to make sure that we 
drained our air tanks or you know what's going to happen the next thing when you start your truck in the morning uh, it, they're just not going to work right so but uh, it is good practice if you can to try and drain your air tanks when you can but again with, with these new air dryers um, it usually will be uh, if there's a fault with the air dryer uh, you may run into that problem again okay uh, make sure that your glad hands are snug and fit and uh, watch out for your cracked air lines as well okay if you guys have any questions while i'm going through this please feel free to uh, let me know okay <clears throat> All right, um, keeping on with the being prepared, you want to ensure that you have a good set of winter wipers, okay? And they are available at both terminals. Again, just go talk to, uh, talk to Wayne or talk to the, to the guys up in Rockster. They'll be more than happy to give you a set. And uh, if you know how to put them on, you can. If not, uh, they'll do it for you, okay? Also, another thing too, and this shouldn't be too much of an issue, but if you are getting washer fluid outside of any of the terminals, Make sure that it's winter washer fluid and you don't grab a summer wash that somebody might have left by accident because obviously that's not going to be, uh, it's not going to work. It's going to freeze up on you, okay? Um, if your washer fluid is not spraying properly, okay? And I know everybody in this room has probably encountered that at one point, all right? Uh, we all know that the lines are probably frozen, okay? So just idle your truck, all right? Get it nice and warm, put your defrost on, get that heat going, all right? And, uh, and get those lines unfrozen, okay? Uh, we want to always, and this is part of your pre-trip, but again, it's extremely important in the winter, check to make sure your heater and defroster are working, okay? Um, it's extremely important during the winter months, all right? Uh, one of the other things too, when we're doing your light check, okay, make sure that you walk around your trailer, uh, you know, especially uh, your back brake lights, that kind of thing, you want to make sure that all the snow is cleared, okay, so that the guys behind you can actually see what you're doing. Plug in your truck when you're not new, when it's not in use. Okay, that's an obvious one. This will ensure that uh, your truck's going to start when you want it to. Uh, if you don't have that plug-in option, you can always utilize your auto start, which all of our Pro Stars have, and the new LTs as well. All right, um, this is going to pre prevent your truck batteries from dying. If you guys aren't familiar with how the auto start works, um, basically it replaces the load shedding. Um, what it does is it'll monitor your battery levels when they get to a certain point. It's going to fire it up and, and charge that. Uh, those batteries up to where they need to be. Okay. Um, if you guys have noticed in the bobtail area, we actually have some more plugs now. They, we've been authorized uh, to, to put more plugs in. Uh, so hopefully that's just the beginning. They're going to add some more as well there. So uh, I know right now we only have the ones up front here by the shop, but uh, uh, more are coming. So that, that'll be good. You guys can utilize that as well. All right. So we talked about being prepared. Let's talk about the second rule, which is okay. Can you see? That's the biggest thing, right? So again, we want to make sure that all the snow is removed from our windshield and mirrors. Uh, make sure our headlights, marker lights, all that kind of stuff are clear of snow and slush. Okay, this is this is basic stuff, but again, it's good to talk about it uh, as we run through this. All right, run your defroster at full capacity too, at the highest possible heat for approximately five minutes. That's going to heat up that windshield. Okay, and it's going to prevent it from uh, freezing, sudden fogging, that kind of thing. All right, I know I've done it myself. I've been in the hurry away. I go, and then the next thing you know, um, I'm all frosted up. Right. So if you just give it five minutes, that's going to save you time on the road from the stop and wait again. All right. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep a safe distance. Okay. Uh, we're looking ahead, always 12 to 15 stack seconds ahead of you. Okay. That's very important. Um, during the winter, it can take three to 12 times the distance to stop on ice. And snow um, as opposed to dry roads okay so always just keep that in mind all right I know we have a lot of guys who think oh well I'm heavy I can just go and uh, but it's not just yourself again it's also other cars on the road that kind of thing too that you have to be aware of all right um, remember that your stopping distance is it's basically a calculation of reaction time uh, plus the time it takes the vehicle to stop okay and it's not just your reaction time it's also the reaction time of other people on the road and that kind of thing so just be aware of that. Um, ensure that you're well rested and not fatigued. Okay, that's another one. Um, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you have a good rest. I can't stress that enough. It's so important. I mean, they've done all kinds of studies to prove that uh, uh, you know not getting a good night's sleep or a good rest uh, uh, you know increases your chance of, uh, of a collision. Okay, uh, be aware of your surroundings too. Um, be aware of four wheel cars. Okay, that's another thing. Um, they may cut in front of you. Or move slower, that kind of thing, so keep your distance, all right? Um, another factor that a lot of people don't think about is stress. It can also cause uh, fatigue, okay? When you guys are on the road, you know, you get stressed out or whatever. What happens when your body goes into stress is 
um, you get a, a, like a shot of adrenaline almost, okay? And when that adrenaline wears off, you become super tired, okay? So try to just maintain an even keel when you're at your job and you're driving down the road, okay? Uh, take a break as soon as you can. Also, uh, take breaks when it is safe to do so. That's, that's very important. <clears throat> okay, so we all know too, when we're driving down the road, road markings may be difficult to see during extreme snowfall. So that's another reason why we want to reduce our sp uh, speed, increase our falling distance, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, ensure your low beam headlights are on. Look out for stopped or emergency vehicles on the side of the road. Give those guys lots of space, all right? And we all know um, what it's like if you're standing on the side of the road and a big truck comes by. Uh, you know, it can be quite scary and dangerous. So, and in most states now, it's law. We have, they have the move over law where you've got to move over right to, to give these guys extra room. Um, let's talk about snow plows too on the highway or on the interstate. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen plows before. You'll know that that front blade is a lot larger than the actual vehicle. Okay, so it's not advisable to be passing um, a snow plow, okay, because you've got the potential where you could end up uh, hooking yourself onto that front blade, okay. Uh, standard plowing practice here in North America, it's called echelon plowing. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen it, where basically you've got three plows that'll clear a three-lane highway, right, and they all kind of run in tandem. I know it can be frustrating because they're usually only going about 50, 60 kilometers an hour, but just stick with it. They usually only last a couple of exits anyway, and uh, you know, they keep the roads cleared. Okay. <clears throat> hey. uh, highway bridges, okay, we want to make sure that there's more care required when we cross bridges. Okay, This is uh, extremely important. Bridges are the first thing to freeze when the temperature drops, okay? Because unlike um, regular roads, they do not hold any kind of heat, all right? Think about a bridge, right? You usually have an underpass there. You know, the wind is going through. Uh, with a road that's on the ground, you have the warmth from the earth, that kind of thing. Uh, when it comes to bridges, uh, there's just no heat is left in there. So they're the first to freeze and they're dangerous. Also, right? So always be careful uh, when you're going over a bridge, all right? Um, Black ice, we'll talk about that as well. It's basically just clear water that's frozen on dark on dark roadways, okay? It's, it's definitely uh, something that can happen fast, all right, and something that you have to be uh, aware of, all right? How it forms is basically when the temperature, the air temperature is warmer uh, than the pavement, which will cause the moisture to rapidly freeze, okay? And we've all seen that. The roads get real shiny in the sea, right? So you have to be very careful about that. Um, some other things to look for, if you don't see any kind of water spray from other vehicles that are driving around you, obviously you know that that water is frozen, right? So be careful if you see those shiny roads. Um, some other places uh, that, that black ice will form is in low-lying areas, okay, that may have water runoff. So bridges and underpasses are another one too where you have water runoff uh, and you'll get that, uh, that black ice freeze. <clears throat> so. Just a few more tips, um, do not use cruise control during winter driving, okay? When you've got snow on the road and ice and that kind of thing, uh, you wanna be in control of the vehicle, all right? Cruise control we use um, when we uh, um, do uh, basically uh, dry, dry weather driving, okay? That's when we wanna utilize that. Uh, some other tips, um, slow down on bridges, overpasses, tunnels in the early morning, okay? That's another time when that air temperature is rising faster than the pavement temperature. Um, Keep both hands on the wheel, be aware of your surroundings, and drive according to the road conditions. All right, we'll get into rule three here, which is adjust. So there are three forces that affect you as a driver, okay? Inertia, all right, which is essentially inertia is a tendency for moving objects to continue moving forward in a straight line. Uh, when braking, inertia tries, tries to keep the vehicle moving, okay? So does everybody kind of get an idea of what that means? Basically, it's just it's the keeping you moving straight, keeping your truck moving straight, uh, your trailer moving straight. Centrifugal force acts when your vehicle is turning, okay? So this force pushes your vehicle away from the path of the curve, while inertia will try to keep it going in a straight line. So they kind of work against each other. Um, and the last one uh, is traction, which is obviously the grip that your tires have on the road. So the amount of traction determines the amount of control that you have and that you can maintain over your vehicle, all right? So our biggest loss in winter driving, obviously, is traction because the roads are covered in snow and ice and whatever else. Um, without traction, this is when the inertia and the centrifugal force uh, will push your vehicle into a skid or a jackknife. This is essentially um, how it happens, okay? <clears throat> so 
Another thing we'll talk about is slipping. Uh, there are two situations where slipping occurs. It's either when you're starting or stopping, okay? Uh, if you feel your tractor is slipping or you accelerate too quickly, um, spinning tires will create less traction and possibly damage the tractor, okay? So you just be aware of that, right? Um, you know, there's all kinds of different ways that people will try to get traction, but um, just be careful with that one because you could end up damaging your, your tractor. Uh, some stopping tips include uh, slowing down early, when approaching intersections, uh, curves, hills, that kind of thing, make sure that you gear down if necessary. Um, when you start your truck in the morning or whenever, always start off slow and easy. Okay, use a light foot on the accelerator again because you know the harder you go, the chances of you losing traction again are, are significant. All right. Uh, in deep snow too, another tip that sometimes works is make turn your wheel side to side. Okay, get that snow out of the way to try and uh, clear a path for you to. Go forward. All right. Uh, some other things you can do uh, if you're stuck, right? We talked about this a little earlier. Keep a bag of salt in your truck or even sand as well. It doesn't take a lot of salt or sand. Throw them under your drive to get some traction to get you going. Okay. Also, too, if you have a little shovel, you can dig yourself out. All right. Um, danger zones, curves, and lane changing are your biggest danger zones. Okay. Slow down when approaching a curb, okay? Especially on your on and off ramps. That's where we see a lot of rollovers and, and accidents happen is on the on and off ramps or changing lanes. Uh, on a right curve, okay, you want to keep your front wheels close to the center line to prevent your wheels, again, uh, from dropping off on the pavement. And then when you're going left, you want to keep your wheels uh, close to the right edge of the pavement and the rear wheels from crossing the other lane of traffic, okay? So it's just basically just kind of the opposite. Uh, but again, lane changing is your big danger zone. Uh, plan your lane changes. Signal well in advance. Okay, don't just put your signal on and go. Give other drivers some time to react. That kind of thing, um, and make your lane change as smooth as possible. Okay, um, watch out for your trailer pushing you on curves and turns as well. All right, so we talked about uh, being on the road. Let's talk about braking. Right? This is a pretty obvious one. Never slam on your brakes. Braking should be done as smoothly as possible to maintain control. Uh, your anti-lock brake, braking system, everybody should know what that is. Basically just automatically pumps your brakes to make sure your wheels don't lock up. All of our trucks are equipped with that. Most cars are now too. Um, when you're driving on grades, okay, remember that downshifting can break your traction and, and ensure that uh, your shifting is as smooth as possible. Right? Be careful when you're, when you're going up or down hills. Stay below the posted maximum speed limit and watch your coolant and water gauges uh, to make sure that your truck isn't overheating, okay? Especially when you're going up, all right? Everybody should know this one. When we're driving on a downgrade, we never want to shift into neutral and coast, okay? Um, if, you, if you overuse your brakes, obviously they will overheat and fail. Uh, so make sure to begin braking once you hit a safe speed, all right? So basically what you want to do is bring your speed down, release the brakes, and then brake again once you have regained that speed. And you kind of play that cat and mouse game uh, as you're going down the hill, right? To make sure that, again, that, you, uh, that your brakes don't fail on you. Always stay in gear. Can't stress that enough. Um, if your brakes fail, you guys have all seen, especially driving in the U.S. Uh, or, or out west, uh, we have the runaway ramps that we utilize if you do brakes fail or you lose control, um, it will save your life, okay? So just try to hit them straight on. Um, they'll ruin the truck, but they'll save your life and possibly somebody else's life on the road, okay? But again, that's a worst case scenario. If you guys are prepared uh, and, and you're driving the way you're supposed to, uh, everything should be fine. <clears throat> so if you are stuck, again, we'll talk about that. Uh, don't spin your tires or rock your tractor. Uh, you, usually this results in you getting more stuck, okay? So your traction aids that you want to utilize, um, you know, spread your kitty litter, salt, dirt, whatever you have. Um, you can use your uh, your four by four block wood uh, chains. Chains you can use those as well. Yeah. Um, you, you don't know, even need to throw them for the tire either. That's right. You don't have to. Anything that can just give you that little bit of traction to get you out usually will work. Careful. Use a low gear too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you can always lock your, your interaction uh, differential. That should be a given right right off the bat if you ever feel like you can't, uh, can't move. And uh, accelerate gently, all right, and uh, ease off if you're really going to spin. Okay. We just said we don't want you doing that. <laughs> so 
Uh, let's talk quickly about jackknifing. Okay, what is a jackknife? It's basically when a truck attempts to make a turn and the trailer loses that traction um, and it will start to fold towards your cab. Okay, it's scary stuff, all right? <clears throat> When your tractor and trailer are at a 15 degree angle, um, it's impossible to recover from that, okay? Um, so it, once you're in it, it's, it's very hard to, to get back. Uh, so what causes jackknifing? Hauling an empty or light trailer in combination with over braking is the biggest offender, okay? That's usually what'll put you, put you into a spin. Uh, over accelerating on icy uh, upgrade and uh, spinning those drive wheels will, uh, will make that happen as well, okay? Uh, another one is over braking uh, on a heavy curve or on a curve, all right, too heavily on a curve. So how do we prevent the jackknifing again? We want to avoid slamming on our brakes, number one. Uh, keep a safe distance. Uh, check your mirrors for trailer swing, okay? If you see that, adjust accordingly. Uh, now be cautious when hauling light loads and do not accelerate suddenly, all right? Again, it just comes down to taking your time and, and, and reading the, the situation, what the road conditions are like. If you drive to the conditions, you should be fine. Uh, breakdown, okay? If you're prepared, you guys should have everything you need in your cab, okay? So you want to activate your hazard lights, place your triangles out on the road, that kind of thing. Um, secure the tractor trailer by applying the brake. Block the wheels if necessary, okay? Uh, one thing to remember is try not to overexert yourself, okay? Cold weather can put extra stress on your heart, uh, so you want to be careful of that, all right? Uh, run your engine every 10 minutes, okay, just to keep, conserve fuel but still stay warm. Uh, those extra blankets that we talked about earlier, make sure you got them, utilize them, okay. Uh, monitor your body for signs of hypothermia, wear a hat, scarf, that kind of thing. Um, you know, our mothers used to always tell us wear a hat and scarf, there was a reason for it, okay. And that's, that's where we lose the most heat, is in the neck area and through the top of our heads. So um, make sure that you, you're, you're covered there. Uh, do not fall asleep either. Um, try to move around frequently. Keep your circulation going. That kind of thing is is uh, is critical to keep you keep you warm, keep you alive. Okay. Some other non-driving tips. Um, be sure to make sure when you're entering or exiting the tractor that you use a three-point uh, contact. Okay. That's very important. You don't want to slip and fall and break your neck or whatever. Uh, make sure you have winter footwear. That's another thing too. Be properly dressed. All right. I can't stress how important that is as well. Thank <laughs> you.